Hey guys, Joe with ECRM here, and I have with me two special guests. Both of them are from Clorox Better Health. I have uh, Bob Richardson, the Director of Customer and Industry Development, and Ala Sharlinsky, who is the Customer Development Manager, uh, National Grocery and Club. So both of you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Likewise. So, so both Bob and Ala were supposed to be at our March Healthy Living Vitamin and Supplements session when it was supposed to scheduled to be in person, but we all saw what happened with the coronavirus, and uh, we ended up doing a virtual session this week. So one, I wanted to thank you both for being uh, a part of the first virtual session that we did, and we're going to get into that uh, a little bit later. But before we get started, can you guys give an overview of Clorox Better Health? First off, um, Better Health, um, the MS brands, okay, vitamins, multiples, and supplements, is part of the Clorox umbrella, okay? Uh, we also have other divisions, and one of them is Burt's Bees. But uh, basically, we acquired Renew Life and then Nutrinex uh, over the last number of years, basically as an alternative in the health and wellness area, similar to Burt's Bees. Uh, we define ourselves as not just a cleaning company, but a health and wellness company. So this fits our overall portfolio quite nicely. And we did pursue both in the case of Renew Life, Nutrinex, what we would call all natural VMS brands, but to brand them separately, they're under the umbrella of better health. So Ala, with that, please. Great. We have four awesome brands in our portfolio. Renew Life, which is a probiotics and cleanse brand. Rainbow Light, which specializes in premium multivitamins, really well known for our prenatals in particular. Natural Vitality Calm, which is a magnesium brand. And last but certainly not least, we've got NeoCell in our portfolio, which is a premier collagen brand. And now you have uh, several products around immune, immune health, correct? Because that's really big right now, obviously. Of course, COVID-19 has forced people to take a look at their health, and we see that uh, immunity products are surging in sales, uh, and we offer several different products that really help folks um, enhance their immunity function. Uh, first and foremost, multivitamins, which is the obvious one. Um, our business has surged in that arena, and we offer a full line of men's, women's, children's, and teen multivitamins. Our formulas are not only A through Z complete with therapeutic potent um, uh, ingredients, but we also overlay superfoods and probiotics and digestive en enzymes to enrich the uh, nutritional content of our products, but also make them easier to digest. Um, but we don't stop there. You know, immune health really stems from gut health. So our probiotics are really important to take right now. Renew Life has premium formulas um, that are now non-GMO. And uh, you can't have strong immune health if you don't have a strong gut health. So it's really important to take your multis, but probiotics are no less important. Gotcha. I mean, I, I think if this whole uh, pandemic has done anything, it's really, really increased everybody's focus on health. Uh, and not only that, but longevity. I mean, I know that you have everybody doing thing for the now, right? Which is taking supplements and, and anything to boost their immunity now. But I think it's also given them a longer view of just they they are going to need to really continue to have a healthy lifestyle moving forward. Oh, no doubt. It, this this um, point in history is unprecedented. Um with, with in, in many aspects, but it's really forced people to take a look at their health and reevaluate their lifestyle choices. So right now we see our business surging um, because people are reaching for immunity support products to keep themselves and their family healthy. But we anticipate this trend to be a sustained uh, phenomenon and we expect that the baseline velocity sales across VMS is going to forever be heightened in a post COVID-19 world. Speaking of COVID-19, you know, what other impacts have, has that had in the, from the business perspective in terms of, you know, just connecting with buyers and, you know, we were, like I said, we were all supposed to be together 
in March over, uh, I, I forget where it was going to be, but in person, and now everything has changed. So how has that impacted the way you guys do business? Well, let me, and I'll, I'll take that, uh, and it's, I'll give you a, a broader view. I'll take it up beyond and past uh, VMS and Better Health. So the Corox company is about a $6 billion company. Um, we're, as I said, we're a health and wellness company. We're generally, we're in about 10 major categories. Uh, we're number one brands in every category. But we run a very lean business. And, uh, and I would just, so <laughs> I'll give you a, like an MBA kind of look at this. So basically all of our businesses are predominantly base. The categories are growing at 2 to 3% a year, and we're generally pacing that growth. We have uh, enough surge capacity to maybe about additional 15 to 20% in surge. Uh, if you have 50% surge capacity, then you're ROA. <laughs> you're, you're not being a very efficient manager. So, I mean, we actually saw what was going on, and we're not a big international company, but we do have products and businesses in China. So we what, saw what was going on in Wuhan. We actually prepared, particularly in our cleaning division, for wipes, for bleach. We went out and bought raw materials. Actually got it. We, we were quite happy with ourselves that we're all prepared for this. And uh, there's an old saying about, you know, build your plan and work your plan. And that all works until Mike Tyson hits you in the mouth. <laughs> and that we got about that first week of March, we got hit in the mouth. And all of our businesses grew at around 200 to 400% for that month of March and continued into April. So when you're growing at four or five percent and you got search for 15, we quickly wiped out all of our inventories um, on all of our best selling items. So our machine is built to run very efficiently, but it's not built to run when you basically got your mixing centers running at about half full and no trucks and no products. So it has been a it's been an awakening for us. Uh, so actually, uh, Joe, we've. Um, I probably spent more time on virtual meetings with all of our trade partners talking about where is my product and when am I going to get my product. So actually staying at home, I probably, and I, since I'm, my job is to know pretty much all of our retailers, I've been intimately involved with all of them at all levels trying to explain what we're doing and what we're not doing. Okay. And I think we've had a, some of the same situation a la, on our better health with COVID issues, so we might talk about that. We're no exception. Uh, the VMS business had some hiccups and we're still working through them, especially on the logistical fulfillment side. Luckily on the supply side, we are actually very well stocked and um, we, are, we have an action plan in place now to make some short-term fixes to get our logistics running back to uh, cl as close to normal as possible and some long-term plans to make adjustments to prevent any sort of logistical outages in the future. Um, it's, it's been uh, key in, to communicate with our customers and be transparent about the issues we're having. And that's been um, a big part of what the retail team is, is, is doing these days. To Bob's point, uh, the big focus is how do we keep our customers um, supplied and in stock first and foremost, and then address other opportunities, new products, resets as a secondary conversation. So it's all about supplying our customers right now and uh, doing the best we can in the situation we're in. Yep. And, and that kind of brings us to now and, 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 you know, where, like you mentioned, this is becoming more and more a virtual world. We were traditionally in-person sessions. So, you know, once this happened, everything had to be postponed or, you know, we, nobody knows what the future is going to have. I mean, it was just a big question mark. But what we, we still saw, the buyers, they couldn't travel. They couldn't really meet with you guys face-to-face. -face. The On the supplier side, they were having a lot of challenges just getting access, yet they still both needed to do their jobs. They still both needed to do what they do. And uh, so we figured, you know, that's why we built this whole thing. So um, now you guys were, since you were already registered, it wasn't like, you know, we were trying to find you and invite you. We just changed the registration to the virtual. But... What were your thoughts when we first launched this? Because this came out of nowhere, and, and, and it's more like, uh, it's, you know, it's obviously it's something new for everybody. So just what were your thoughts when you heard about it and, and uh, uh, as far as a, a solution for you guys? Well, it's interesting, and, I, and I'll, uh, and Joe, you'll, since I'm the oldest guy <laughs> here today, 
I knew Charlie. I knew Charlie when Charlie launched ECRM. Mm -hmm. And everybody had laptops, and Charlie was so far ahead of everybody else that it was, it was incredible. So to be able to kind of look with the ECRM logos in the back, look at where we are today, and look at your heritage, and this is what ECRM is known for, is about technology. I mean, as soon as I heard and Andrew called and, and Ala called me going, you know, we've got it. We, looks like we've got a virtual show. I'm going, and we've been Zooming. I said, well, if anybody can pull this off, it will be CRM. But I, I'll have to compliment Andre, Andre, Andre came in and gave us two lessons. Uh, I was a little nervous that first morning and we got on and we had a little teeny wrinkle. and get, A lot of it was me just logging on and kicking it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll have to tell you a funny story. I actually left. I left my home. Our office is in a federal bank building. Went there because if I'm, my technology is going to work, it'll work there. And I don't have the dogs barking. Okay. I actually took a picture, and, and I won't even tell you what it is. Uh, put it on Facebook. My CEO and I are good friends. He, and he's like, what in the hell are you doing at the office? <laughs> 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 so I got caught. But actually, make a long story short, uh, it, it was seamless. Uh, quite frankly, Ala and I have worked together for quite a while. We know our roles very well. Mine's a big picture. Take notes. Cover the Clorox issues if there are any. She's the resident expert. So in 20 minutes, we, I mean, that's our normal stick when we're in person. So it was a, it's, it's, it was very seamless for us, okay? And again, the benefit of having the notes, being able to take the notes, me even typing instead of writing was great. So, uh, and then the transition from one meeting instead of the ring, you got five minutes, it quickly brings it down. That actually went quite well. So, I mean, I was, my job, Joe, is to belong to all the associations. I mean, you know, NACDS, FMI, I probably will do 150 to 160 customer-facing meetings a year. So this one was just, wow, very seamless and love it. Ala? Couldn't agree with you more. You know, to be honest, I was a little skeptical at first about the uh, platform being easy to use and maybe uh, having some technical issues along the way. Um, but in hindsight, I should have been maybe a little bit more optimistic because in this new in this new normal, everyone has been forced to adjust, and video conferencing is um, the way of life, both for business and personal. So it, it took it, it took very natural. Uh, it, it felt very natural, and and it felt like the retailers and ourselves took to it quite easily. The interface was seamless, which obviously is key in this whole thing. Um, so the technology worked and the participants were familiar with the video conferencing already and the marriage of the two just came together seamlessly. I think that's a good point. You know, you have that, that it, people are forced into this world. So they're getting, they at least have a rudimentary understanding of the platforms that are around and using this stuff. Yeah. And I think for us and me looking at it going forward, uh, and again, I'm a big in-person I like in person, there's no uh -huh. do for that. But this this format does allow you to, for Allah and I to say, go to future in-person meetings, our next vital meeting, and also be able to bring in maybe some of our people from our category or from our R&D group who, hey, talk to me about the new gummy line that you've got down here. Why? That's a, it's a state of the art. We probably wouldn't fly that person in normally, but I will say this will complement other resources that you can bring to the party as we do our normal stick right across the desk. That's actually a good point. Uh, the fact that you can bring in other people. When we stress tested the platform, we were doing meetings with 20 people at a time. And um, that is a great point that you could bring experts in that uh, can kind of color the picture and really help out. But yeah, you would never fly the, a group of researchers over to one of our sessions. Yeah, and I think, I think too, this is for you to think about this. So let's say we have the next big ECRM, and normally you will have, you know, I call a big tent where you'll have a speaker or a panel, okay? Well, if it happens this fall, we're still going to be under the, hey, maybe we can put 20 people in there. So can you do that portion in a virtual? So everybody go to your room. I'll not just go to our, you know, all our rooms and we'll see that. And then 
that afternoon we start the ECR meetings. So that's a way to maybe complement uh, and keep big tents, but you're going to be doing it virtual because you can't pour 500 people into a room. Yeah, we are going to be looking into all different types of ways of incorporating education into the programs, both whether it's on demand or uh, live video or even having small modules that reside in a room. We're, we're actually building a lounge, a virtual lounge, but we're also going to have a thought uh, leadership area and we're looking to get modules that people could just click on during a break. If you have a 20 minute break, have a 15 minute module, you could go get a cup of coffee, watch that and go on, you know, so uh, some will be evergreen that we could use across categories. Some will be category specific, but the cool thing is it's going to always evolve. I mean, we're talking about stuff. We're getting feedback from this one that we're already incorporating into the platform for the next one. And it's going to be an ongoing thing. So if I understand, this is your proprietary technology. We built it. Yep. Well, I don't know about, and again, I'm, you know, I'm thinking about commercial commercialization, but there'll be other associations who will want to do this. There is some fear of like, you know, uh, security with like zoom and some of the, you know, the bigger ones, you the know, zoom bombing. you guys might, um, say, Hey, for a fee, we'll license the ECRM technology. Okay. Just, for what it's worth. People are already reaching out to us for that. I mean, a big security is part of it because the reason why we actually built our own is because a lot of retailers are hesitant to use Zoom after some really public Zoom bombing things that happened. So we needed, and all of the extra security features that Zoom added would have posed a challenge to some of the things we needed to do. So we just modeled what we built on the connect app that everybody uses in person with additional functionality for the virtual. And uh, it just keeps evolving. The more feedback we get and it will continue to evolve ongoing. And the other thing though, is um, the one component that cannot be duplicated is the client success managers and how they work with everybody and, and doing that. Could you talk a little bit about, how you worked with our CSM in the prep and getting ready for this? Well, she, our girl, she, she is a pro, okay? And she basically, she knows, she knows us very well. She knows Alla very well. I mean, even to the point of, you know, getting the items in, how we're going to handle samples or not handle samples, okay? She was pretty seamless, okay? So, again, um, we're, we're blessed to have a, one of your best, okay? And she does a really good job. Ala, any, any thoughts? Couldn't agree with you more. Because we've been participating in ECRM for years and years now, you had our information already in the system. And she was able to plug and play into this new interface without us needing to really get in, too involved and resubmit information. So she really took the workload off of us and prepared us beautifully um, the, we, we did one prep session ahead of time to troubleshoot and also to get us comfortable with the uh, interface. And, um, when we did run into one hiccup, just one hiccup during meetings, it, I was really pleasantly surprised how quick ECRM jumped in to acknowledge, uh, the issue. It was simple. Um, our retailers, internet access dropped off and, and she, uh, we dropped, she dropped herself from the meeting. ECRM came in, um, rescheduled the meeting within a couple of minutes, and we were back online with her in uh, the next um, opportunity, which, which was like uh, in, in 40 minutes. It was awesome. I'm so glad you brought it, that up because, you know, that's something, these little hiccups, somebody's sound, or audio, that's going to happen. I mean, you watch any news show and you have three people uh, coming in virtually and one of them is fuzzy and you can't hear them. The other guy drops out. It's a fact of life. And when we have hundreds of people, that's hundreds of computers, hundreds of Wi-Fi's, hundreds of different variables that can be factored in, something will happen. And I'm one, I'm amazed it was so few hiccups. But two, the other thing was what you mentioned is the whole team is there watching the dashboard and as soon as somebody hits that custom, you know, that service button, it changes color to, you know, and it, it, it indicates to us 
So that's why they can jump on it and they can connect to your cell phone. They can, there's so many different ways. So we wanted to make sure that, because we knew in this world, that's going to happen. Everybody, I can't get, make sure, we can't make sure that everybody's got a 500 megabits per sec, second Wi-Fi connection. So we need to accommodate everybody. And when something happens, the key point that we wanted to do is make sure we were on top of it instantly. So that's why I'm so glad you talked about that part of it, because that is going to be a fact of life with virtual. You absolutely uh, rose to the occasion there. And, you know, nothing will replace the face to face. Um, but in this new reality, in this new norm, we're all dealing with technical challenges. We've all got a dog barking in the background or a baby tugging at our leg. Uh, so it kind of humanizes the experience because we're all in this together and we all have uh, these challenges playing out in the background. So it, 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 it's, you're missing the human element, but in somehow, in some way, this whole thing brings some humility to the situation in an unexpected way. Yep, and you know what? A few things that I heard in the uh, recap interviews with buyers and suppliers is, you know, they mentioned that it did, even though, granted, we all love face-to-face. -face, I went to 48 sessions last year uh, myself, so I'm a big fan of face-to-face. -face. But this was a very close approximation of that experience, especially, at you know, being able to see the people and interact. I mean, it does make a difference. While it's not exact, it does bring you kind of close to it. Without a doubt. I mean, the wear and tear of business travel is very real, and the cost of business travel is very real. And these shows, not just ECRM, but in general, business travel requires people to be out of the office for days at a time. And I like Bob wor Bob's word, and I'll use it again. This is an awesome compliment to business travel. Not all business travel is necessary, and I think people are starting to reevaluate the frequency. Mm -hmm. And to have a supplement like this, pun intended, um, <laughs> is 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 really um, quite um, relevant to our, our experience today. But I think going in the future, having a hybrid model just makes a lot of sense in in our new technology world. Let's make our tech work for us. Um, and this is a great example. You guys have really risen to the challenge and have done something very timely and, um, and on point. I commend you guys. Great job. Well, I, think, I think the way to Joseph, and we will package this going forward. And I'll go back to again, uh, the compliment of other people coming in. So um, to, for us, I mean, we have a lot of people who start up with sales analysts, new people coming into the business have not made these face-to-face -face conversations, are not used to the rigor of one call after another. Um, for basically, it takes them for training to be able to see some people like Ala present for, you know, 30-some meetings on the content of here is just invaluable, okay? We can't always bring those people to the sessions because of expense, okay? So this is, a, this is beyond the, I'll call the technical complement of resources it is a great training tool. Okay, so I would definitely punch that up as part of the of what the value is for the complement of the mm -hmm. video ECRM. And on the buyer side too, you get somebody that's new new to the desk or a new assistant buyer. I mean, what great what better way to really kind of give them an immersion in it without having them leave the office? So uh, yeah, moving forward, it will be a mix of both. We will have virtual, we will have in-person. We're going to focus on, you know, like some of the in-person sessions are really key hangout. You know, I mean, there, there are some that people love just coming and reconnecting with everybody in addition to the meetings. Yeah. And you know, there are some that are more than others. So those are the ones we're going to keep, you know, the larger ones, the ones that tend to, you know, be the gathering spots. And then some of the smaller ones, certainly if we launch new ones, it'll be virtual first, but we'll, we will have that complement. Plus, we also have the ESIs, too, the, uh, uh, the more simpler ones, just the, the presentation to the panel of buyers, but everybody likes the face-to-face. -face. I think you'll, well, and again, you'll, we'll go through a transition uh, now that we've opened up a Pandora's box and seen that there is an alternative. Uh, you'll get a blend of this, but I think just... Love to keep, just keep doing what you're doing. I mean, again, you guys are leading edge on technology and kudos to pulling this one off. Like very well done. 
Thank you very much. Well, where do you think the future is going to be? How long, you know, do you have an, uh, a kind of idea or what you're hearing out there of how long this is going to go on for? We think that, you know, we've made most of our sessions for the rest of the year virtual. I think at least until October, they're all virtual. More than likely, it's going to be the rest of the year because I don't see big groups of people getting together this year. I think, and that's everybody's asking that question. Number one, uh, as the retailers start opening it up and letting us come back, that will be a big part of, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> fish where the fish are. Yep. <laughs> retailers are starting to let us come in and see them. That's good. If the retailers are moving back to conventions, even if it's a, 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 a shape form type, we'll start coming back. So I'm, uh, what I'm telling my people is, is I could see some October and there are, there are a couple of things that are in September and October that probably will happen in a limited basis. Mm -hmm. And then more coming after the first year, probably getting more back to reality. And if I can add to that, I mean, time will tell how this whole thing is going to unfold. But in the meantime, we're going to do what we do best. Make products to help people stay healthy throughout the madness. And that's our number one priority and our focus. And uh, whatever will be, will be. You know, that's the best way to look at it because we don't know. There could be a second wave. There may not be a second wave. It may come and not be that bad. I mean, you just, you don't know and nobody can know. So the best thing is, like you just said, to have that uh, capability to be flexible and adapt, which everything happens. And I just like to offer a reminder um, that when we're when we're thinking about our immune health, stress is the biggest um, stressor on our immune health. Um, so I just want to end on that is if we could all take a deep breath and keep our stress levels low and uh, stay calm through this whole thing, we'll all be better in the end for it. Um, so keep keeping on. <laughs> I like that. Good, good, uh, good thing to end on. So, Bob, Allah, thank you so much. Uh, I love hanging out with you guys, and it's, it was great to still be able to do this, even though we couldn't be in person. Miss you, Joe. Good to see you. Here, Joe. Thank you.